we're gonna be checking out let's talk about american culture sharks i enjoy watching these kind of culture shock videos it's kind of telling you things what you might not know what's happening in america if i was gonna go to america and stuff i might be shot by it so let's jump into this video and check out what we got so i'm lawrence and i'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos Excuse me. that uh, sorry uh, sorry I'm filming mate you know. sorry oh uh, i know there's a camera sorry i just i'm looking for the lake where's the lake lake michigan you can't it's right there it's the size of four northern islands that, that's a british accent i think i know you from somewhere it's the glasses isn't it gives it away it's yes i am pond. lost in the pond lawrence right. yeah, yeah. Are sure you, you're you. sean you're sean it's the you've the you scottish well. one this is insane. what are you doing here i'm vlogging let's vlog together why not that's amazing yes let's do it scottish oh that's stunning wow so sean a lot of americans tell me that they love an english accent mm -hmm. but they tell me that what they love more is a scottish accent so right now Do i feel they? a little bit inferior <laughs> have well, you on your journey i mean have people said you know anything about your scottish accent have they asked scottish. You questions about it yeah actually i get all the time people talking about the Scottish accent and asking me to do it for them, which is actually a really tough thing to do because my accent, when I speak now, like to, to you and other people here in the States, like I have this kind of softer accent, if you like. Yep. It's still Scottish, you can still identify it. And then when they ask me to speak how I would speak with my friends, I just can't do it. It's like a thing that's, that's not natural. Because it's so thick. Yeah. So thick that I would I really hear understand it. it. I think you, you might, but certainly like a lot of people wouldn't. Um, so yeah, people ask all the time about the accent. They say they love it. Um, just as it is now, to be honest, and it's, it's really nice actually. People people do appreciate it, and they, they want to know more about it. And I've actually heard quite a few people who are trying to learn like Scottish Gaelic, for example. I see. Um, Wait, what's, which is the next stage Scottish from Gaelic? that? But um, that's advanced. That's advanced, yeah. What is that? It sounded like he said Scottish garlic. Well, I wouldn't mind some garlic. I ain't gonna lie. Don't mind garlic. <laughs> Garlic, man. Yeah, it was funny because I think when I moved here, people were obviously asking me to do my voice, my accent. Yeah. I felt a little bit like a performing monkey. <laughs> oh, don't tell me like when I go to America, right? They're just going to constantly be saying bottle of water. Oh, oh no. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> but on the other that. hand, it was a nice icebreaker. We didn't yeah. have to, you know, come up with something like phatic communication in yeah, order to enough. move into the conversation. So I kind of liked it as an yeah. introvert. Do you feel the same way? Like, I think British accents in general, but the Scottish accent travels quite well here. Yeah. There's been a lot of times when I've just asked for something at a sh like a shop or something, yeah. and the person, oh my God, where are you from? And yeah. then I say Scotland, and then they're really excited about it. It gets you into situations and it gets you like invited to places as well. Like there's just the Scottish accent, you know? It's kind of like, like a superpower, isn't it? Like a superpower, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I was worried in the, in the initial beginnings that people might not understand everything, and that's only happened a couple of times here, but most of the time people have understood everything. My observations, uh, you know, doing the channel Lost in the Pond are quite English centric. Yeah. So I, I love the Scottish accent, accent when they get like really aggressive. Have you ever heard like Scottish people get angry? Oh my God. <laughs> focus on a lot of that. So as good. I travel around, you know, I've seen a lot of things that remind yeah. me of England, a lot of kind of place names and things to do right. with English heritage. Have you detected any of that from a kind of Scottish standpoint? Absolutely. Like there's just so much here. And oh, we were driving, for example, in Seattle the other, the other week there uh, and we saw a place called Aberdeen. We didn't actually have time to go to Aberdeen, but I was fascinated by that fact. And then we also saw a Fife, both places in Scotland. And you know, actually just about everywhere we've been here, we've found these little a a Fife? reminders of Scottish names that definitely people must have come here yeah. from these places in Scotland and, and set up a, a home here. And then when I speak to people about that, they often tell me about their ancestry or the ancestry of the people that set up the area. There's a lot of appreciation for that type of thing here. You know, obviously the English side, but the Scottish side as well. Cool. So speaking of that kind of Scottish you know, background mm. to things that are in the United States, you saw that most abundantly, didn't you, in North Carolina? Yeah, North Carolina, they take it really seriously there because they, they, they can show like the boats that arrived along the East Coast and North Carolina was one of the places that a lot of Scottish people settled, which is actually shown in the programme Outlander. They show can I just say, if you go to Scotland, I don't think they're always walking around like this. <laughs> Some might, some might. The, the boat's coming over oh, from yeah, Scotland and yeah. landing there. And so a lot of people there today, they've got really Scottish names like McDonald and uh, Ramsay and all the rest of it. We've got a homemade beef stew for lunch and it is... Wait, what? McDonald is Scottish? Does that mean McDonald's is Scottish? <laughs> 
Does I, wait, where did McDonald's come from then? One of the best ones I've ever had. So on my channel, you know, I talk a lot about what it's like to live in the United States and some of the culture shocks that I experience, you know, on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis yeah. and all of that. But I'm really interested because it's been so long mm. since I visited the United States. And that's, of course, what you're doing right now, right? right? I'm so interested in your thoughts and some of the culture shocks you've experienced while traveling in the United States. Yeah, I mean, there's some kind of bigger... Bro, how big are the trees? <laughs> what? Sure ones and then there's some like silly ones as well. I guess the silly ones that you could definitely say are like everything seems bigger and vaster. Even trucks on that's the highway mad. are enormous. Oh, yeah. So that's always a bit of a fright when we see it. And then things like gas stations, for example, we stopped, we, we stopped at one in Texas, Bucky's, and it was just like off the scale of anything I've ever seen before. Oh, yeah. so I guess bigger picture stuff. I feel people here are very much more th enthusiastic about things, life in general and things that are very positive. There's lots of situations, for example, somebody will say something really nice to you out of nowhere, out of the blue. And we'll think that wouldn't have happened back in the UK. This is the funny thing, isn't it? Because I think there's this True. belief that British people are... Super yeah, ain't no one saying anything nice out of the blue in the UK. So I talk to you out of the blue in the UK, you're getting robbed. <laughs> polite that we are almost too polite but my experience is that americans almost outdo us in terms of politeness yeah wait i don't get with i've heard this a few times people are saying uk people are polite am i just from the wrong areas i've lived in like five different areas in the uk and i don't think we're polite at all i yes i know i don't know where these polite uk people are coming from but sure i feel like we're polite in the uk but it can be quite cold whereas here yeah. cold people yeah. are just polite but they're warm and open you know while we're on the subject of sort of british politeness or, or british sensibilities you went out to seattle didn't you yeah now i hear that that is one of the most sort of britishy places in terms of weather and in terms of the personality of the people there did right you, did you get a sense of that that's really funny actually i think definitely the weather for a start i mean it was it was quite chilly at times and it was quite damp a little bit was it overcast oh my god is this the uk wait <laughs> is this the uk like a like a cleaner uk we had one really great day of sun and one overcast day, so a bit of both. And in terms of the people, they, I would say they were still very nice and embracing and warm, but yeah. maybe a bit less than other places we've been here. I see. So yeah, I would say definitely link that a little bit back to people in Britain. Ooh, give me a hot dog. So going back to oh. culture shocks, when it comes to food, it's quite a lot different here, isn't it? Oh yeah. To what you'd expect in- Bro, that oh yeah was oh yeah. Like, it is better, oh yeah. Like, the food in America, oh yeah. Brim, what's some of the sort of most surprising food that you've encountered? Well, I think just in general, people know how to use seasoning here. Seasoning? <laughs> yeah. Do they? Like, we, I think we don't. Oh. In the UK, like, so the things tend to be more tasty here in general. That's yeah. a good point. People always say that British food is a little bit bland. Well, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot. They haven't had mushy peas. We haven't had mushy peas, honest. to be honest. But uh, I, I would agree. Like, I've come here and so many basic things that we might have something similar in the UK, they're just better here. Yeah. Like uh, yesterday we had like a Italian beef sandwich. Yeah. What was that? It was roast beef. Like we, we have a lot of roast beef, but it was just tasted better here. Better and bigger. Bigger, right. much bigger. In New Orleans, we had a lot of like Cajun food, for example. And yeah. was, that was the most surprising oh. for me because I didn't expect it. I'd never had it before. Wait, what? What? Wait, this is Cajun? This is like seafood. And it was just amazing. I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I mean, the is South Cajun is seafood? Huh? In general actually has a lot of surprising dishes my favorite dessert ever is pecan pie mm -hmm. uh, if you ever get to try that best thing in the world yeah now while you're on the road speaking of food yeah. while you're on the actual road and you have to get kind of travel food yeah what was that experience like did you find anything that you considered healthy yeah that's been tough to be honest i've I definitely put on quite a few pounds here <laughs> yeah yeah bro i've never been to america and i can all i can all already answer that no <laughs> From what I've seen, healthy-wise, no. Tasty-wise, yeah. There's a lot of good places. Like, we, we found some really great diners that had all the kind of usual breakfast stuff. Chicken fried steak. Have you ever heard of chicken fried steak? Mm. Never heard of it. Where did wow. you see that? Th there was in this diner, and it was... I didn't know if it was chicken or steak, but yeah. I think it's beef. Okay. And it had batter on it. Wow, Ooh. this is getting more confusing. It was really confusing, but it was very, very good. And that was... The what is it like? Oh, I think he... Actually, I think Austin the Pod did a video on it. The chicken fried steak. It was like steak with, because I didn't know if it was chicken or what, what was going on here. But it was, I think it was steak with butter. 
Oh. Apparently, a very normal thing to have at a diner here. Do you send me the address. Yes, That's I will do that. But then, like just the basic things like hot dogs and burgers you find here and the layover places. I mean, really, in the UK, when you have the. Wait, is that is that the cheese? Okay, I've seen many hot dogs in America. What is this, bro? This cheese is looking disgusting. <laughs> what is this cheese, bro? Take off the cheese, give me the hot dog. These kind of labor places, your only option is McDonald's or Burger King. I see, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. So many unique places that are unique to each state, even. Yeah, that is true. When you go to the UK, your only op options is pretty much, I, I wouldn't really say, but yeah, it's, it's either McDonald's, KFC, or Burger King. That's where you're going to go for fast food. In the Northwest, they had this Burgerville place that they only have there. Obviously, you get to California, they have In N Out, which you only have there. Well, I think it's expanding, but anyway. Yes, it is. I tried In N Out and it went in and. Well, we won't finish the sentence. You know, it is interesting you say that because a lot of states do have their own state dishes. And that's, that's something I really love about yeah, that's place, cool. getting to try different foods from different places and identifying it with that place. Yeah. What are some other markers that you've been able to identify with a, a particular place? Let's say California. What stood out to you that said, yes, this is California? Ah, California. That's a funny one because we were unlucky when we got there because the weather wasn't as good as we thought it could be. It was actually pretty chilly. Whereabouts but was this? We started in the far north oh, of California, wow. San Francisco, and then driving down to LA. And I expected it to be, you know, really hot. Like, but um, no, the, the stunning coastline there, I think, really That's stood out to me. And LA was just like just an explosion of different senses. And, yeah. and I, I'd never really expected LA to be. I didn't know what to expect from LA, but it was just, it was very, I don't know, confusing in some ways, but I liked it. Oh, let's do it right there, look. Yeah, this Sean guy seems like he's gone and traveled a lot of them. I'd love to do that, man. Hopefully with the way that the YouTube is going, make sure you guys are subscribing, helping out with the channel. I appreciate all of you lot. Um, yeah, hopefully the way YouTube is going, I can do something like this like next year or whatnot. But yeah, it'd be really good. I'd love to do this. Vlogs. I want to find all the famous scores. I think it was uh, Austin Powers who said that uh, Southern California is in no way like England. I suspect you got that sense that uh, yeah. it was otherworldly. It was otherworldly. Yeah. I felt very strange being through there and driving on the coast. But I accidentally had a Mustang as well, a convertible Mustang. Yeah. So I felt like we had the full California experience in that sense. But yeah, Ellie, I didn't really feel I got to know the city and got to get to grips with it. You know, yeah. I expected it to be one city, but rather it's a collection of oh, cities. Oh, wow. Oh, right. In one place. Yeah. yeah, California, I think, is a place I want to go back and learn more about because it's so big and, you know, we drove through it in about four or five days and I feel like it's, it's quite a short amount of time to get a handle of somewhere that's probably just as big as the UK. And this seems to be a Mad. common theme, you know, based on some of the conversations I've had with you and uh, just what you were saying there, is the size, is the yeah. vast... The state is like just as big as the U... Bro, that's crazy, man. ...size yeah. of America. And you were, you were quite surprised, weren't you, that you feel like you've almost had to rush every experience because yeah. it's not England, it's not the UK, I should say, yeah. where you can just get from one place within hours. Absolutely, so I think that's the thing we learned first of all when we arrived. We arrived oh, in the wow. Northwest first, so Seattle, Portland, and then we drove to the border of Oregon and, and California. Google Maps here cannot be trusted. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, it might say, oh, that'll take four hours. As well, because a lot of nice places to stop and take pictures, but you find it takes double the time that you expect it'll take. Yeah. Doing these kind of driving experiences, you really, really see how, how big this place is. The one time we did a loop from Oregon to the coast and then down through a place called Willow Creek, which is where Bigfoot is from. And it just took, it took the entire day. And I was actually oh, wow. and worried we wouldn't get there at the hotel in time. And I just realized, well, this is just a tiny- Yeah, when I come over, I'm gonna have to sort something out. Like, I'm gonna have to do like a business trip or something, right? And I'm gonna have to be there for like a month. I don't even know what the longest amount of time I can. But it's for work. Do you know what I mean? It's for work, right? So, sure. <laughs> the corner of the States. Yeah. It's a tiny part of it. And it took up the whole day. Did you see Bigfoot? We didn't, but I tell you what, I stopped the, the car 15 minutes outside of Willow Creek. And this is before I knew it was Bigfoot country. I got out of the car. I looked up. I could see all the stars. And then I looked around and thought, we're in the middle of nowhere here. I heard some rustling and I got back in the car and we drove <laughs> off. Unbelievable. Did you have a camera on yourself that was in kind of infrared and there's sort of oh. snot running down your nose? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd love to go to Texas. Speaking of size, you made it down into Texas, which is yes. roughly the size of two and a half UKs. Mad. Right, so if you're driving That's through crazy. there, it can take hours, yeah. days, right, to get to two points of interest. Did you drive through Texas quite a bit? We did. We drove from San Antonio to Houston, which Houston, San Antonio, Austin, they're in a little bit of a triangle together, bunched up. We drove for like four hours or something like that. 
Right. A small part of it. I mean, it's good to get that Texas is driving experience. Sure. And by the way, everything there is huge as well. Yeah. The lanes are huge. The trucks are huge. The cowboy hats. The cowboy hats are pretty big as well. Like, we didn't really see, I don't feel like we got to see all of Texas. We kind of got that corner where the main cities are. But that was that was some experience. I, I really enjoyed it down there. Oh, it's making me want to go so yeah, so a lot bad. of Americans, you know, often tell me that the Alamo, oh, it's a bit overrated because, you know, it's just this small building. But I often wonder, is that because they're used to everything being so big in this country and it's just not as impressive? And you being from Scotland, because I've never seen it, I've yeah. never been to the Alamo. Was it was it something that you found kind of impressive from a historical standpoint? Yeah, definitely from the visual point, uh, it is kind of small. There's not much to it. I mean, you can go through and there's a little walk in the back, but really, it's a shell of an old building. If you imagine like a kind of church size yeah. and that's it. Really, I think the reason why the local people in Texas love it and really cherish it and tell the story it is about the history and the story and not about the building itself. Because actually San Antonio and very close by has a lot of really old buildings from that time period that are very, very awesome. But that's the one that has the, the story of the, the Alamo defenders. But then, you know, I heard some comments from other people from different places around the United States and said, they said it in joke, but they said, I'm not sure why the Texans love it so much because they lost. But for me, it was really great to learn about the Scots that were involved in that place as well. Oh, I see. Uh, what, what was the story there? So a number of the, the people who were at the Alamo defending it and who died were either directly Scottish or they were two or three generations Scots. See, and now speaking of, oh, the, kind cool of the Scottish him. history there and, and also the locals, you had a, a, a nice surprise, right? Was this from <laughs> the mayor of... of yeah. yeah. So it's kind of a funny story and I still can't believe it happened. And it was a really nice surprise. So there's a Scottish society of San Antonio. Yeah. It was really great. So those guys met me. First of all, there was a guy with kilt and bagpipes and he was going to pipe us into the Alamo, which was amazing. But then what? a guy called Andrew uh, Morrison arrived and he is a Viscount, Sir Andrew Morrison. And he's also the chief of the clan Morrison as well. His grandfather was the speaker of the House of Commons. He's lived in Texas for 30 years. So he's well established with the local community. Still has a British accent, which is, is, quite, is quite good despite the oh, 30 wow. years. But anyway, we arrived there and he presented us and he had a speech for it. The certificate that gave myself and my wife honorary citizenship for this, the city of San Antonio. Signed by Mayor Ron Nidenberg, I think his name is. So symbolic. Wait, wait, wait. So like, could he technically live there, Dad? If he's got a citizenship for that place, could he just go move there now? Huh? In theory, you are now a US citizen. Well, well yeah. I, I don't exactly know. I, I would like to think so. Like, if anybody's watching who would like to uh, elaborate or like, would like to adopt me, then great. I, I think, though, it's, it's more symbolic. <laughs> we can check on the legal... Yeah, if you want to adopt me, uh, I've got quite a few requests, but I'm looking at all requests. Just head over to my Instagram and uh, just send me your request. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking to be adopted to America. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. Validity of this document at a later time. And not to stick on Texas too long, but it, the reason I do is that I've never been there except for Dallas-Fort Worth mm. Airport. So I'm, I'm fascinated by this. You got the chance to go to a rodeo, correct? Yeah, so again, it was the guys from the Scottish Society of San Antonio. Oh, I'd love to go to one. Yeah, that's a, that's a good Texan experience. And we yeah. really wanted to try it. So yeah, we went out to this rodeo. And yeah, it's very different from anything that we've ever seen or done before. And we just felt like, yeah, this is, this is the Texas, I imagine in my head. And then Illinois. Your next stop, I bro. He's been everywhere. He, he's got all around. Wait, how long was he there for? Pose was here, right? Yeah, Chicago. The Chicago, the, the motherland, yeah. as we don't call it at all. You only had a few days to yeah. be here. We got to go to a Cubs game. That was fantastic. Oh, that'd be Wrigley sick. Field. Wrigley Field. This was your first experience of a baseball game, I yeah. understand. Yeah, first time. You know, I've, I watched a little bit on TV. I think it was in the Olympics last time around as well. It's really different being there. I, I really enjoyed it. You know, it was different from any other sport that I'd been to. I don't know what you felt, but for me, it was like a really nice atmosphere, like family friendly. I think we joked in the video about how it was very dull and we were falling asleep because we didn't understand the rules but the truth of the matter was we really did enjoy the kind of the ambience yeah. that's what i'm saying this is why i like sport in america more than um uk sport like i prefer watching uk football uh that's my favorite to watch if i'm gonna watch a sport but like i'd prefer to go to like a game in america than a game in the uk because it's more like a party like even if you don't like the sport that you're watching you can get drinks, food, it, you know what I mean? It's just, it, it's different, it's different. Being in Wrigley Field and people cheering every five minutes, even though the score didn't seem to increase at all. Yeah. <laughs> 
But you made an observation, I think, during that game that a lot of words that are readily available in all forms of English, yeah. British English, American English, Canadian English, etc., came from baseball, yeah. right? I can't think of any other sport that's kind of been able to do that with the language right. in a worldwide way. You don't hear Americans saying, back of the net, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a good um, point. I True. think that, that was fascinating and definitely something that appealed to my linguistic sensibilities. Mm. Thank you for that. What are your overall impressions of Chicago as a, as a Scottish person coming here? I didn't really do any like planning when we arrived here before we come. I didn't really research that much. You know, I, I might watch a couple of videos on YouTube and of course I watch all your videos as well, but I didn't know what to expect really. And I love it. It's really, it's a beautiful city. Oh, it's wow. Huge, despite being so- Wait, this is, I've never seen Chicago like this. Oh, bro, there's so many towers. What the? So huge with all these That's massive insane. skyscrapers around us. You got these amazing green spaces like this one here. And then the zoo you just took us through as well, which is free, phenomenal. The food experience, as well, it's fantastic. Like there's so many different types of food, the hot dogs, the pizza, the, the Italian oh, food in general. You know, it's not been enough time here, but I really can say that this might be one of the contenders for my favorite stop of this oh, tour wow. so far. Yeah. And can we just get it on record that you are not contractually obligated to say these <laughs> things merely because I'm sitting here, you actually believe it. I mean, I could say I'm saying these words with my own free will. That's fantastic. Well, Sean, it has been fabulous meeting you for the first time. Yeah. And uh, I hope American you enjoy the rest food. of your trip around the United States. You're going to be documenting all of this, right, in yeah. video form. You've done, what, 40 videos so far? Yeah, 40 oh, wow. videos of the trip. It's a bit of a kind of road trip, so it's episode by episode. We've... Yeah, I might have to check a little bit of what he's doing because uh, it sounds good. It sounds like he's traveling all over. I'd love to do that. Like behind the scenes for, for this video of today, walking around and Absolutely, then Wrigley yeah. Field. And... Yeah, great. So where can where can people check you out? So yeah, on YouTube, it's Sean Vlog, Instagram. Yeah, we're going to have to. We're going to have to Sean Vlog. I'm going to have to have a look. But yeah, really good video. Enjoyed this a lot. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys seen any of the Sean videos that you want me to check out, also put them in the comment section as well. I'll check them out for sure. But yeah, really good video. Enjoyed that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash LPWG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.